welcome back students to one more session of your thermodynamics chapter we're almost coming to the end right i have tried to cover all the topics one by one very leisure way so please watch all the videos which i kept in the playlist right so here in the previous video i have taught you what is the concept or what is meant by spontaneity isn't it now we'll see what are the criteria for spontaneity means when when will a system uh, be spontaneous or when will a process be spontaneous what should be the criteria means what are the list of factors which are very important for a particular system to become spontaneous right so first of all spontaneous change always remember whenever i see let me try to make uh, in in the form of a box why because all these points these five important things which you should remember first important box which is remember the criteria is always remember spontaneous change i'll be writing this sp right so this spontaneous change whatever is there is one way remember that this spontaneous change always is unidirectional it will happen only in one direction only one way unidirectional only one way it will happen that is the first criteria right next <clears throat> suppose if a spontaneous change has to occur time to time isn't it so like uh, if it is undergoing a change based on the time then how can the reaction be the reaction can be either rapid or slow okay right so it, time is no factor like means it's it is undergoing step by step slow step or fast step then what is the thing suppose i said the spontaneous change what we said right time is no factor rather right so it can if you're considering a spontaneous reaction to undergo the reaction can occur rapidly and the same reaction or that particular thing it may undergo slowly also a spontaneous change can occur rapidly as well as slowly right suppose if the system whatever you're speaking about right is it not in equilibrium state means it is well, if it is unstable then what will happen the spontaneous change is inevitable what am i trying to explain suppose you have a system the criteria is suppose if you have a system which is is unstable means it is not in equilibrium then what will happen that change will continue or the change will continue in that system till it attains stability means till it becomes equilibrium the change goes on <coughs> occurring in the system so once again if the system is unstable or it is not in equilibrium okay let us write not in equilibrium then what will happen the system goes on and on and on till what time till the system attains equilibrium system attains equilibrium remember that till that the system the change goes on occurring right now once the system attains equilibrium what will happen it will not further undergo any spontaneous change no further spontaneous change occurs so next important criteria is once equilibrium is reached once equilibrium is reached what will happen no spontaneous change occurs no spontaneous change occurs remember this okay first it is unidirectional it may occur rapidly or slowly and if the system is not in equilibrium it will automatically try to attain equilibrium right now suppose once it attains equilibrium remember it will not undergo any spontaneous change right last but not the least the spontaneous change whenever a spontaneous the most important thing among all what is that whenever a spontaneous change occurs in a system what will happen then there is a decrease of internal energy or enthalpy right whenever a spontaneous change occurs what will happen either there is a decrease in internal energy right so which we have denoted by e or it there is a decrease of enthalpy that is delta h remember this so this is a criteria for spontaneity so for spontaneity we have started i have given you what are the examples of spontaneity or spontaneous process then i have given the criteria now we will see a concept which is related to the spontaneity what is that that is not thing but entropy okay now i'll be coming to an important concept of thermodynamics that is entropy first you should know what is spontaneity then come back to this topic right so entropy when i have to speak now let, i'll be taking an example right so we have three states of matter isn't it right so in this three states of matter first what is that solid liquid and gaseous state now in general what will happen the gaseous state is more disordered means it is not orderly arranged the lot of randomness in gaseous state right and next comes liquid state then comes solid right so what will happen that disorderness 
thing, right? So, or the concept of entropy. Now, I'm going to read like this. First of all, when I have to say entropy change, like most important thing. Whenever I'm using the word entropy, that means I'm speaking or using the word disorderliness. Right? We'll be relating entropy as well as disorderliness, both the concepts. Right? So, before explaining or giving you the uh, this one of um, entropy, the definition, what will you write? Entropy, I'll be explaining both the concepts, entropy and disorderliness. Orderliness. Okay. Right. Fine. So, how are these related? Let's see. Now, what just now, what did I say? <coughs> I said, in three states of matter, Okay, in the three states of matter. What are they? This is solid, liquid, and gas. So, in these three states, the state which is gaseous in nature, gaseous state. This is this has more disorderness than the state which is liquid. This has more disorderness than the state which is solid. Okay, lot of disorderness. This is the disorder. This is disordered. This is ordered. Isn't it? Right? Both the concepts. This is ordered concept. This is disordered concept because a lot of space is in continuously moving. Right? Suppose if let us uh, uh, take an example. Right? I'm going to take certain uh, listen, reactions and understand. Suppose if I take an example like Fe2O3. Okay? This is in solid state. This is combined with hydrogen gas and forms what? Fe plus water molecule. So, I get Fe solid and water molecule which is liquid. Now, solid gas, solid liquid. Now, if I have to balance this is 3, this is also 3, Fe to 2. Done. Let us write one more reaction. This is nitrogen which is gaseous state. It's combining with hydrogen which is also in gaseous state to form ammonia. This is also in gaseous state. Now, when I have to balance this <coughs> nitrogen here, 1 by 2, 2 and 2 gets cancelled, becomes 1. Now, this is 3 and this is 2. What will I do? I will multiply with 3 by 2. 2 and 2 gets cancelled, it is 3. Right? This is that. Fine. So, now, this particular reaction, whatever is there, it will be, uh, attend how, there will be a decrease in entropy. Why? Because since, while converting reactant into product, what will happen? The number of the gaseous species, species decreases. See here, here, now I am converting reactant into product. But in the reactant side, you have gaseous, which is disordered. But here, when it comes to product, the number of gaseous products are less. This has become solid, this has become liquid. This is ordered, a bit disordered, right? And what will happen? The products are more ordered, isn't it? Compared to reactants, right? Now, uh, that is why what will happen there is a decrease in entropy here the entropy is a lot because it is a gaseous state here the entropy is less because it has become solid state now in the second case if I have to see all are gaseous state here since the entropy change it's the same all are gaseous the entropy does not change. but here in the first case from solid gas it's becoming solid and liquid so what will happen in the entropy entropy is rather decreasing in this case isn't it Fine. So, uh, that is how you should uh, understand with the reaction. Suppose if I have a reaction between hydrogen and bromine. Hydrogen is which state? It is gaseous state. If I take bromine, it is in liquid state. When both combine together, they form HBr gas. Now, what will happen? Entropy of that particular system increases. Why? Let's see that example and see. What am I trying to do? I am trying to take one more example here. That is, suppose if I take hydrogen. What is the physical state? Gaseous state. I'm combining this with bromine. What is the physical state? Liquid. These combine to form HBr. Now, uh, balance it. This is 2. So, this is 2. What is HBr? Gas. Now, what will happen to the entropy of the system? The entropy of the system increases. Why? Because here, the products contain large number of gaseous molecule. Here, the reactant is a bit compared to the product is more ordered. In liquids, we told no gaseous state is more disordered than liquid. Liquid state is more disordered than solid. So here in this particular system, what will happen? The entropy of the system increases. It is from liquid state, it is going to gaseous state. The, the atoms are very farly spaced. So in this case, entropy of the system, it increases. 
isn't it? Because they are converting from liquid to gas. Suppose if they are converting from gas to liquid, it is entropy decreases, which happened in the earlier case, isn't it? This see this case here in this case. Fine, gas is to solid, entropy is decreasing in this case. So let us write <coughs> decrease in entropy. Hope you have understood what is entropy and based on the disorderness, right? Fine. So now when I have to learn the entropy concept. You have to learn the total entropy change means you need to learn in different types of expansions. What are they? We'll be learning the derivation for entropy. So I'll be doing this derivation in my uh, next video, students. So please stay connected. Uh, let us do the derivation. That is derivation of isothermal entropy in terms of isothermal changes as well as. I'll also be taking you to a concept where I'll, I'll show you isothermal reversible as well as irreversible also.